All right. So last month before the Phoenix Four season, we talked about all the cards. So we're going to see what I said about all the cards and see if I was right, if I was wrong, uh, if I was stupid in some of these decisions. And just overall get, get an opinion on, on how good my read was uh, on the season beforehand. Now, looking back, I think it was pretty bad. I, uh, I think everyone was pretty bad this season. I think that, that most people overrated certain cards and underrated certain cards, but uh, we'll see. Hey all, Binks here. The How's rise the of the Phoenix is upon us. And with it comes a brand new slew of cards to Marvel Snap. We have a season pass card, two series five and two series four cards coming this month. The Phoenix Force, a five energy, six power card with on reveal, revive one of your destroyed cards and merge with it. That card can move each turn. So essentially, if you have a specific card that dies, you can then play Phoenix Force. If you play it on curve, then you'll have a turn to move it as well. Kind of mixes the idea of destroy synergies with move synergies in a really, really interesting way that we've never seen. As far as so strengths of the card go, I mean, if you can hit the perfect line with a move card, like, you know, a Vulture, Dagger, or a Human Torch. Vulture or Dagger? Why would you use Vulture or Dagger, you silly man? It's going to be really, really great to be able to move it. It can also just, you know, if you have anything that gets destroyed in the mid game, uh, this can revive that power similar to what Venom does, where Venom, you maybe destroy like a big card, maybe you play a Maximus on three, you Venom that Maximus, so you keep that seven power, and then you on five, you Phoenix Force, and you get that seven power Maximus back in your uh, back on the field again. Uh, maybe it has some really cool Nimrod synergies, if you can use some range. A little bit of Nimrod synergies, minimal Nimrod synergies, and different things like that. The weakness is its stat line. If you're not actually hitting this effect, a five energy six power feels terrible to play. So true. You know, at, at a minimum, you're looking to get nine or ten power out of your five drops. So uh, just just really really weak if you're not actually getting the synergy to go off. And it's always you know is is it worth it to add this kind of like multiple card destruction and revival synergy to certain decks? Uh, or is there going to be kind of some new Phoenix Force deck that, that'll be created? So I think that it's going to be hard to like get enough payoff out of this uh, to make it worth it to run in a deck. As far as some really good synergies, anything with movement synergies, so Vulture, Dagger, Human Torch are going to love to be revived by this. Also, like ongoing abilities can be really, really interesting to get pulled back up by Phoenix Force because you know it makes it really weird as to where this ongoing ability is going to land it gives you some unpredictability which is why vision uh, does do some pretty good things in the game um so pretty excited to see any card that uh with an overall i think uh, i think that's kind of just kind of ramble for a little bit longer but i think i kind of hit it on the head it's like a little bit too much to add i guess i didn't probably consider it to just like fall into like a more a straightforward combo deck which is kind of what it seems like I feel like the, the the deck ended up just being like the only real way is that it's like a really strong combo deck. Obviously, with the change to a four or five, a lot of things are different about it. It's still not even that good. I mean, it's still not really like uh, available in the meta because uh, mostly because Human Torch is one of the best things you can get, and Killmonger exists uh, so much in the game. So I, I'm still really excited. I think I mentioned later on that I'm just really excited they added something like this to the game because it's an interesting card and unique, and I, I, I definitely do agree with that. Especially with their decision to buff it before the season ended. That's that's very very cool. Next up, we have Jean Grey, a Series 5 card releasing on July 11th. Jean Grey is a 3 energy, 3 power card that reads ongoing. Players must play their first card here each turn, if possible. So essentially, what we're going to be looking at there is that whenever Jean Grey comes down, if you're going to play multiple cards in that turn, it works very similarly to like an opposite Morag where you have to play there. Now, it does say if possible, which I think is very, very important. If you're so true. unable to play any of your cards into the Jean Grey. They're removing Killmonger from the game. Who's the, Why are you saying they're removing Killmonger? Why do multiple people say that? They're patching him out lane then you're okay with that so things like storm or you know landing into a location where, where nothing can happen there things like ebony maw uh, can kind of like completely shut this down right you, you know there might be decks that uh somehow I think that made much sense. those cards out at the same time uh, it'd, be, it'd be pretty pretty tough but it seems kind of interesting as far as strengths go I, this is one of the craziest control tools that's ever been released in the game you know you pair with anything like wave and sandman and you completely cut off your opponent's options uh, just really, really demanding card to deal with. And it might be like a meta defining card where you kind of have to work out a way to play around uh, this card at any point. I think the, the strength. Yeah, dude, I feel like I feel like so many people had like this, like a very similar take to me is that like this card is just suffocating. Um, but maybe in like certain metas, 
Let's skip around Jean Grey. As long as it comes down, it's going to be almost always in your favor. As far as synergies go, we've already talked a little bit about Sandman and Wave and the potential for that to just kind of lock things down. Maybe your opponent like plays a, a Professor X on top of her and it can kind of like shut it down completely. So there's a lot of that didn't make sense either. <laughs> and ways that Jean Grey is going to work. Uh, it's I, I, honestly there might be too many to, to yeah, even think, think about. Think but I think this card is going to be really cool to see how many different cards it can have cool interactions with. For Dex with Jean Grey, I think that she is high enough power level that she's going to be found all over the place. Rips <laughs> in more controlling style decks, uh, and even like maybe bounce style decks that knows that they're going to have a lot. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it actually be Jean Grey actually be kind of sick in bounce? Has anyone tried that? Is that kind of isn't that green? Like, because Jean Grey doesn't do anything against bounce, so doesn't that mean like bounce might have like a cool way of using her? I think just other things are stronger in Jean Grey, right? Or other things are just stronger in that deck. A lot of options for things to play. So it might hinder your opponent way more and you could just kind of like throw cards into the Jean Grey lane uh, for Jean Grey. I'm excited to work out the puzzles of where she fits best. Yeah, it's a big miss there. I think pretty much everyone uh, made her big, uh, made a pretty big miss. I do think it is meta dependent uh, because bounce is so high, but now bounce has kind of gone away, but like still Jean, Jean Grey is nowhere to be found. So um, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see. Two with three with three. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Gabriel Rodriguez, thank you, thank you. Up next, we have Echo, a one energy, two power. It says, after an opponent plays an ongoing card here, remove its abilities. So a really interesting way to counter any ongoing abilities. I mean, if your opponent's running an ongoing deck, you basically make it like Isle of Silence for them. It says remove its ability, so I'm gonna guess it kind of has like a leech type effect. So maybe you end up <laughs> running into some funny things with Patriot as well. Um, but a really, really cool card, and, and as they talk about in the video, the very first counter to Cosmo that we've ever seen. If you play, so yeah, it's kind of. I, th I think as far as like first impressions, actually, uh, I, I have a good read on Echo. Like it's cool because it can stop certain ongoing cards. And what we saw is that Echo has actually found its way a little bit into the meta. A lot of people are playing it to counter these Professor X double dinosaur and Thanos decks that have been kind of everywhere. So it's kind of interesting that Echo, like, well, immediately came out just you know, radio silence. Uh, Echo's actually been cooking in a, in a lot of decks that that uh, people people have been playing, which is which is quite surprising, uh, or at least at least outperforming uh, what I was expecting. Really the big three right now are Nebula, which can get a ton of power, Iceman, and Spider Pig that do a ton of disruption. I call them Spider Pig, lol. Uh, but yeah, that was when Sp that was before Spider Ham got uh, nerfed. So basically, I was saying like, how does this compete with other one drops? Because it's really hard to compete with Nebula, Iceman, Spider Ham. Uh, even though spider ham's not a one drop right now maybe the fact that spider ham went to two maybe now there's like even a little bit of less competition that's an okay control card for one um so it's kind of interesting to your opponent uh, so echo if this actually isn't getting any disruption as you kind of get guarantees from with things like spider uh spider ham and Iceman, it's pretty tough to want to push this into that one drop slot when there's other better options available uh, as far as y'all oh clutch very 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 I, f I feel like yeah i feel like i got a really good read on on that Synergy get rogued or and now that spider ham's gonna tell a lot but they can't you know absolutely stop what you're trying to do uh, maybe there's a chance that hella decks even want to run this where you play an echo out then you play your invisible woman set up your modok and your hella and uh, it's all going to depend on how much cosmos played cosmos is actually really outside of the meta right now there's and also cosmo has found its way back into the meta so like when when echo first came out cosmo wasn't really around then after a couple things got changed cosmo i feel like has has pushed into the meta quite a bit more at least i've been seeing it a lot more uh, so so it gives a little bit more uh push for that and hella is also another another one of the only decks that runs echo there's a time where cosmo was everywhere they're gonna absolutely love this card and i think that this is just gonna be a really meta dependent tech card uh, if there's like important things like dark hawks and dinosaurs everywhere an early echo can kind of shut down one of your lanes from your opponent point slamming there and maybe you can then build your strategy around that so it's really going to be a meta dependent card in my opinion to what decks it fits into and, and the decks you know variety are going to be really short on the meta next up yes and i think that it's also weird like tech cards like echo right like people say like oh what is an echo deck like what what deck should i use echo and it's like the cards like that you can't really think about it. it's like what's a what what what's a cosmo deck like there's no cosmo deck or cosmo is a option to uh p potentially have in your deck so it kind of works in the same way and it's all kind of meta dependent so i think i had a really good read on it up we have legion which is a series four card coming out on july 25th is a five 
you know location that that can you know create things creating multiple versions of it is is pretty insane uh if you have any like big disruptive locations like isle of silence or, or different things like that. uh bad rocketeer if, if rogue steals an ongoing does it her effect get cut off due to echo i think so that's very interesting though i'm pretty sure it's considered a uh, ongoing carbon is played and i'm pretty sure it would get the slap the the pink hand pink glove that legion can you, you know for certain feature locations legion is just completely busted so there's going to be certain days where where there's just something where if you legion it you're going to cause mass chaos for your opponent you, you know maybe it's something like a, a destruction location you play legion onto its spread and you have things like wolverine and deadpool that can you, you know pop off or or you have like a nimrod that you can just play down and, and attack all the different locations so this is a very important card to think about anytime there's a feature location as far as weaknesses go legion they're, they're so, so I, my, my opinion on these was just like, you know, it's it's just going to suck. It's going to be synergizes with a meme it. card. If you storm a location on four and then you play Legion on that storm location, you might think that all three lanes will shut down, but actually on turn six, you can still play in the Rip. other two lanes that, that weren't stormed. You know, there's just kind of... To be fair, there was precedent for that. To be fair, there was precedent for that uh, by the time that I, I took this video. And we didn't know, I, we didn't know until right before it came out that that was going to happen. That did kind of change the change the opinion on uh, on Legion a lot, uh, because a lot of people also thought the same thing because it would work the exact same way that Mirror Dimension would. So I think that I think that if I had known this, I still don't think I would have said Legion was going to be as crazy as it is because I think well we'll get to the ratings later, but I think Legion was like criminally underrated even without uh, even without the Storm interaction. Storm interaction is. Funnily enough, that's what everyone thought he was broken and started playing with. Then people just kind of realized that he's uh, he, he's really good without it. Uh, it's super interesting. Kind of some some problems with having any level of consistency just with specific cards as opposed to feature locations. And what deck would you see Legion in? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll make some funny decks with him. Uh, so true. Don't you worry. I'll, I'll find some funny ways to play Legion. But if you're looking for a competitive deck, I don't really see him fitting anywhere. And next up, we Rip. have the card that I predict to be the best card of the bunch. Mirage, a Series 4 card coming out on August 1st. It is a 2 energy, 2 power that says on reveal, copy the lowest cost card in your opponent's hand into your hand. Do you guys not think Mirage is good? Do people actually think Mirage? Like, do you guys not think Mirage is good? uh I mean, what, what card is better than her other than legion which i dude i will say i'm gonna put my foot down here um i think mirage af after a while people are going to realize that mirage is better than legion i think so i still think that's true give it plus two power this card does so many things to me it's like a maria hill on steroids what it's gonna do but i do think i think i, I think Probably right now in this meta, Legion is still better. But I think that I think that people are, are sleeping on, on Mirage hella hard, dude. Is give you information on what's in your opponent's hand, so you know what small card might fit in on a later turn, or what card they might be playing the very next turn. It's usually going to be a pretty good card because your opponent chose to put in their deck. So it's not like getting a random card; you're getting what someone else would put in their deck now there could be some bad synergy there but in general your opponents are going to be putting in better cards than a randomly generated one and you're giving it plus two power so it's going to be a power spike you're, you're investing power later to get a small card that's overpowered to play i haven't seen too much love for mirage people just kind of think it's a little bit meme -y and you know probably a solid card in like a dinosaur deck i think that this card is insanely strong uh, you're getting basically okay. two four worth of power information and a resource as for weaknesses it is a two two so if you play it late it feels a little bit weak and you have to really you, you know play the card to get plus two power uh, and it has weaknesses if people are running low cost cards that only work if you have synergies for it so if the the low cost card that you're getting from your opponent it doesn't make any sense for you to play and it's actually you know pretty bad for you to play then you're just playing a two two which kind of sucks i think that this card fits into like good card decks it is just a very very good two drop it, it kind of fits into that really upper echelon of it's a, a, a well statted two drop that gets you a, a good effect you know it's kind of like on, on like the scorpion scorpion lizard silk kind of level of two drops that you'd want to fit in uh, i would love to play this card in any of my sarah decks to just get an additional resource uh, i'd love to play this as like my two drop in my surfer deck to, to find a small card that i could fit in like turn four and five which sometimes gets a little bit awkward uh, i think that once people realize how strong this card is, you're going to see it uh, in a lot of different decks. And let's give...
Facts, dude. Y'all are saying I was wrong, man. I guess you could probably say I was wrong when I said I think it's going to be the strongest card. But also, everyone was wrong about that. I don't think... I, I, I said that Mirage is going to be better than Jean Grey. Go find some other people who said Mirage is going to be better than Jean Grey. Probably not many. Probably not many. We'll talk about the one out of five rating. Every single card of rating one through five. Five out of five card is a card that's kind of like meta defining four is in like one or two decks and like a pretty good option like kind of like an a tier card three it can be found in some decks as long as synergy makes it work two is a card that has some very fringe play and a one is going to be a card that you pretty much are never going to see outside of really weird circumstances i think that phoenix force is three out of five this is wrong phoenix force is a two out of five i would say uh even even buffed before it was a close maybe even close to a one out of five uh, but it was a two out of five. It was probably a fringe two out of five on, on release. Now it's like a solid to close to three out of five card. Uh, so I would say that I was definitely very, very wrong with, with calling it a three because it was on the very echelon of getting to a two, uh, two out of five card, in my opinion. Five. I think that Jean Grey is a four out of five. Uh, so four out of five. Uh, obviously wrong with Jean Grey. I think Jean Grey is a two out of five card. Uh, so first two, the pretty pretty shooting way too high. Let's say that Jean Grey uh, is probably yeah she probably ended up being a, a two out of five card I think uh, may, maybe in the right meta she'll be a three out of five maybe in the right meta she you know maybe eventually people will figure out that Jean Grey is just just a lot better than it is but I think that Jean Grey just just uh, hurt hurts you way more than you'd expect most of the time. I think that Echo is a two out of five. Uh, that's just correct. I think that Echo is a 2 out of 5 card. Maybe closer to a 3 out of 5, but I think that she's the high end of, high end of a 2 on 5 card, uh, I would definitely say. Uh, very meta-dependent. Um, when metas are really good to have a card that stops on going, it's good. I think, I think that the, the, that rating was right on. I think that Legion is a 1 out of 5. Damn. Legion's a 4 out of 5 card, man. All, like, Legion, Legion's a solid 4 out of 5. Um, yeah, this is a big oof, but every single person, I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you everyone else had this exact same thing. I, I don't think there's a single person who thought that the storm interaction wasn't going to work that would have ranked this higher than a two out of five. And if you find someone or you or that person, congrats on you, man. Uh, congrats on you. And I think the barrage is going to be a four out of five card. I think she's probably a three out of five. She's she's a very very solid three out of five. Uh, probably on a higher end of a three out of five. Um, it's a little bit harder to play her, I think, than you'd want. And I think that the decks that want to play her have a lot of competition, have a lot more competition on two uh, than I expected. But I still think it's very very solid three out of five on the higher end of a three out of five card for sure. Maria Hill Copian, dude, she's just better than Maria Hill. I'm gonna play Maria Hill later, so. I'm going to play Maria Hill deck over on YouTube, uh, so get ready for that. Oh, look at that guy. Uh, so cool. So I, I think, I don't know, I, I felt like, okay, I think the Phoenix Force I overrated. Uh, obviously overrated Jean Grey, underrated the hell out of Legion. Uh, I think Barrage I probably overrated a little bit, but I think I was, I was still pretty darn close. Uh, and then Echo I was right on, but obviously Legion was completely off. Uh, so that wasn't the, that wasn't the best, but uh, that was fun. I, I I'm excited. I wanted I wanted I think I want to do this. Um, I think I want to do this every single. I think I want to do this every single. Uh, in. I want to do this. I want to do this like every single uh, every single season. So that's what we're gonna do right now. But cool. Uh, if you're watching on Banks Extra, thank you. This is what uh, I reviewed from the last season, and this is right before the new season came out. And also subscribe because this is my extra channel, not my real channel. Say hi. The YouTube channel chat. All right. Goodbye now. Uh, thank you for watching.